Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, a bit overcast today actually. And I am delighted to be joined from Houston, Texas by Adam Goldman. How are you doing, Adam? Great to see you, John. Yeah, and Adam has worked in, in business and startups and franchising and has given him the expertise to help entrepreneurs find the best franchise for them. Over a 20-year career, Adam has founded three successful companies on two continents, including an IT company in Poland and a real estate investment company in Texas. And most recently, he grew Vanguard Cleaning Area Developer Concept in Houston into multi-million dollar a year enterprise with over 40 franchi franchisees and 300 customers. And you're the author of the acclaimed franchise book, The Franchise Lifestyle. And that's what we're going to talk about today is, is franchising. Uh, in, so let's even get sort of start off, Adam, is, I mean, there are so many different types of franchising and franchises out there. Um, it can be overwhelming for some people. So, um, how do you how do you help people go about finding the right franchise, or uh, or are there franchises out there that people wouldn't even kind of considered or even thought about? Such a great question, John. And so, what I would say is that there's a big misconception in my industry when people hear franchising. Their first thought is, okay, McDonald's, Burger King, I'm going to be an owner operator. And uh, I'm going to be going ahead and, and flipping burgers in the back. Uh, what I can tell you is that there are 75 industries in the franchising world. And there's kind of a spectrum when it comes to how much time is required, right? So there are opportunities where you do have to kind of put sweat, sweat equity in and work full time in the business. But there are also others where you can run it semi-absentee with managers. Uh, and I'm always amazed at all these different opportunities that I give to my candidates in sectors that they didn't think of before. Mm -hmm. So what is it, what is one of the more unusual ones that have come or one of the, some of the newer ones that have come on stream recently? Because uh, I, I, I keep seeing like franchise opportunities all over the place. So one of the things I love about the franchising space is I think that franchising is really good at adapting to uh, up and coming businesses. So for instance, one of the things that's really fascinating these days is that there's a lot of push towards tiny homes. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know these existed. It's, think of it as being like a manufactured or mobile home uh, that could be on your house, uh, mean, meaning be on your property lot. Yeah. Uh, and look, it's not only a, uh, something that works in the Northeast or California, there's also a housing shortage in other places in the country as well. So just something that kind of taps into this evolving industry that a lot of state subsidies is very fascinating for me. Yeah. So if you're thinking about if you were thinking about uh, getting a franchise business, what are some of the what are some of the questions you should ask yourself first? So the first question I think is most important, can you follow a system? Because when Gerber in the E-Myth was talking about kind of the pitfalls of being an entrepreneur, if people don't have the right sort of system, then they're kind of uh, wearing all the hats in their business, especially things that are unproductive, right? So being a franchisee as an entrepreneur is a different type of skill set, someone that can follow these things. And if you're buying McDonald's and refuse to put up the golden arches and you want to sell gyros instead of hamburgers, you're probably not a good fit for that system. Right, right. And I guess um, one of the other things you've got to ask yourself as you look at those franchises, as you were mentioning earlier, is like, how involved do you want to be? Do you want to be an owner operator? Do you want to be like, you know, hand, roll up the sleeves involved every day? Or do you want to be a little more hands off? Absolutely. And, and I do want to have one caveat. There's nothing in the franchising world where you can really run it absentee, right? Mm -hmm. If you're looking for totally absentee, get a mutual fund or invest in a Vanguard uh, type index fund. But just, yes, we, we have things that you could potentially run with managers that have low employee headcounts that you could run on the side. Right, right. And then um, if you decide to if you decide to go ahead and and you know start a franchise, talk me through what does a typical franchise startup look like? I mean, what are the what are some of the things that the the new franchise franchisee has to go through? So look, every single franchise is different. Let's kind of sure. divide them into brick and mortar and non brick and mortar businesses, right? So if you buy a restaurant like McDonald's, right, 
you can sign the agreement, but it's probably six, nine or 12 months before you even open your doors because you have to find the right location and you have to go ahead and build it out from scratch. Uh, 99% of my placements are things where a business is working well in some other market, and you're actually going ahead and, and taking that skill set and expanding it to a new market. Uh, so the startup time for a brick and mortar business is a lot longer than a service business or non brick and mortar business. Let's say it's something like a serve pro, uh, which would be water restoration, or let's say mosquito spraying, right? Lots of mosquitoes here in Houston. So the startup for that would be a lot more simple, right? You go and you kind of get um, trained at the mosquito companies or mosquito franchisors version of Hamburger University. Mm -hmm. You get your truck and you're able to start it within two to four weeks, right? Which is actually a really positive thing for non brick and mortar businesses. Yeah, yeah. And then what, what are some of the things that you need to prepare yourself for? Um, because I mean, it's, I mean, number one, it's obviously you're starting a business, but also you're starting a franchise business. So what are some of the things that you need to prepare yourself for? So look, every single franchise brand is different, but I look back at my time as a franchisee that started in 2010 as being one of the best moments of my life, right? Because you have all this adrenaline, you're so excited, you're ready to go. It's like riding a bike with training wheels, right? So you open up your doors uh, and then all of a sudden you need to find customers, right? It's just, and so, but you have this in a perfect type situation with a good franchisor, you have all that support that you really need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And then um, just, and, and I know again, like uh, there's all different types of franchisees and this is probably, you know, how long is a piece of string kind of question, but, uh, but uh, sometimes people I think are put off because they think there's a huge amount of investment or they have to pay a lot of money in, in upfront, like initial franchise fees or whatever. But um, I mean, I presume there are franchises to fit most pockets. Absolutely, John. And so one of the things that I love about my industry is that yes, you have these businesses that are um, millions of dollars. That's how expensive McDonald's is. But on the lower end, uh, service companies like a barbecue uh, cleaning business or barbecue servicing or maintenance b business without much inventory, that could start about one hundred twenty-five thousand or one hundred fifty thousand dollars all in. Um, and there is financing involved as well. And people don't realize a lot of times they can use their existing four hundred one k as a rollover without penalty, instead of investing in Amazon or Disney stock, which has been dismal for the past five years, go ahead and invest in yourself and not, and don't take any penalty as, as, from that investment. Yeah. And then what are some of the, uh, what are some of the other questions, you know, what are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself to see whether you're really, this is really something that you want to do? I mean, what are some of the, what, what are, I mean, this is something that you're going to carry. I mean, you're going to be the franchisee. You're going to be the, the, the main person. So, I mean, what, what are some of the other things that you should make sure you're ready for? So people really only invest in these franchise brands if there's an underlying reason, right? And everyone's reason is different, mm -hmm. right? But what I would say is there's kind of an underarching theme. People since the pandemic have gotten a taste of flex work and yeah. they want to kind of put their career into their own hands, have an exit plan. And I think the question would be is, why do you want to do this, right? Is there an underlying reason? Um, it could be more time with the family. I have candidates or friends that are in the energy industry and they've spent three weeks or more in the oil patch and they're just tired of spending all this time away from the house and they want to spend more time at home and have a better quality of life and more flexibility. Um, I've, um, so that would be one question to ask, just what's the reason why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and so tell me uh, from your own from your own experience, franchises. You said when you did it the first time, it was one of the best things you ever did. Um, talk to talk to us talk to us a little bit about that first franchising experience. What what did you learn from that that you were able to carry forward? I think one of the biggest things I learned, which is humbling, is that I'm not very good, frankly, at creating process. Right, my strength is kind of going ahead and executing. And that really would mean that for me, uh, starting a business like Amazon, like Jeff Bezos from the back of his truck, probably not a uh, realistic thing for me to have, but to actually have something with a really well-defined system in place that I could follow well and kind of rely upon brothers and sisters in arms that were doing this successfully in other markets in the United States, that was really a good use of my skill set, right? To just kind of execute. Uh, and, to, and to go ahead and to block and tackle and be on offense on a regular basis. I, I just found the power of process and system. 
Yeah. And and the the part there that you alluded to there, I think that's another part of, of franchising, um, which maybe people sometimes overlook. Like if I start a business on my own, it's my business. But if I start a franchise business, I can draw on the experience of all the other you know, franchisees, I can uh, hopefully like connect with other franchisees in the network and learn, learn from other people. So you're constantly learning and, you know, there's compounding intelligence, if you like, from across the franchise network. Absolutely, John. I mean, if you look at McDonald's, all of their best ideas like the Egg McMuffin or the McFlurry came from existing franchisees. Mm -hmm. and, and what I would also say, John, is that people tend to underestimate how difficult it is to start a business from scratch. And they, they tend to also underestimate the savings or the, uh, the kind of benefits that they would have in being in a well thought out system because of all these different mistakes that they would have otherwise made and would have cost money. Yeah, absolutely. And I think obviously when you start your own business, yeah, that's, it, it's, it's a tough thing. And it's uh, oftentimes people just run out of liquidity, unfortunately, before, before their, their cash flow situation is, is stable. Um, but I guess that's another good thing with the franchise. If you decide to go with the franchise, like they have modeled out everything. They have like the historic of the trends and stuff. So I guess in some ways it's a little bit more predictable. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, what are some, uh, have you seen any uh, uh, unusual franchises come on lately? So look, I, 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 there's definitely some weird ones. Mm -hmm. um, they're dog poop scooping franchises, which, by the way, is a fantastic business because there really is money in muck, right? Yeah. Uh, the only person that tells you to follow your passion is this ultra successful person that's in radioactive waste and someone that's uh, giving some sort of commencement speech and owns gazillions of dollars. Um, yeah, the, mo the most interesting one I've ever seen, I don't know much about it, is a geese chasing franchise that goes to different uh golf courses and you take dogs and you chase these geese away and you make money from this uh activity <laughs> that's funny it's fantastic well and um what is it what are the what are some of the um more common ones that you uh, work with people on that ones that you see are are, are good successful franchises so as i mentioned john look i have 75 different industries mm -hmm. um what i found is that there's kind of been this kind of uh, migration towards recession resistant safe businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite sectors in general has always been uh, things that are service businesses that are necessary, right? Uh, so I love the painting industry, for instance. Uh, the reason why I love the painting industry is that it's never going anywhere. It's kind of like the number one way to increase the value of a house or a business. Mm. Uh, and it's also the kind of business that has a lot of inefficiencies. When I was getting some work done at my house. I had a bid. One bid was three hundred dollars. Another one was ten thousand dollars for the exact same thing. So there's just a lot of, a lot of inefficiencies and a lot of room for people in that. Right, right, right. And um, and then uh, you know, there, it's obviously important. I just out of uh, I'll let you know that I did work for a franchise, or at one point I was uh, on the executive team at New Horizons Computer Learning Centers and worked with the franchisee network. I guess one of the other things is is when you're when you're deciding what franchise is is getting to know the franchisor and seeing how they work together with you because you know sometimes there's a, sometimes they work very closely together and sometimes there's there are maybe franchisees who have that perception that the franchisor is working against them. <laughs> yeah, and so look, that's part of your investigation process. And I would say to anyone that's looking at franchises don't just take the word of the development rep, talk to existing franchisees, ask them tough questions, just kind of see if it's a cultural fit and if you like what you see. And, and also look, ask yourself what the horizon would be in the next three to five years for this franchise brand, because sometimes franchisors get sold as well, right? So you have ones that are just not going to be sold to private equity, right? Mm -hmm. You have others that might get sold to private equity. What does that mean for your relationship with them? Are you open to actually being in a business like that? Yeah, no, that's a really good point because obviously if, if the, if it's sold, you know, you, then you have maybe you're dealing with different people, et cetera, maybe the circumstances change. So, so, you know, that's, that's a, that's a really good idea. And I guess, as you said, nowadays, with people getting used to working remotely and good connectivity and stuff, those more service oriented oriented franchises or ones that you can do, you know, virtually are going to become even more popular. 
Absolutely. Now, look, when I talk about franchises that are virtual, I, I don't necessarily have many that are just kind of like drop shipping where mm -hmm. you're kind of on your uh, on a Zoom somewhere. But um, what I can tell you is that typically it's territory based and even in boring businesses like blinds, right? We have a situation where sometimes people are still having Zoom appointments uh, with their clients by, uh, to actually fit out the blinds, which is really interesting and fascinating. Yeah, no, no, and uh, absolutely. And um, what what is a what is a one piece of advice you would give to somebody who is thinking about getting into franchising right now? But what what are some, what are a couple of pieces of advice to set yourself up for success? I mean, what you just said there is is a good one. Is that you know just don't just select a franchise, talk to the development rep, and run off with it. Like go talk to franchisees. But what are some other pieces of advice you give to people? So I believe that people look at franchising the wrong way. Yeah. They see some sort of an advertisement, they see something online and they dig deep into this franchise brand, right? And they probably shouldn't have even uh, looked into this brand to begin with, right? So my advice is for people to actually use someone like myself as a coach. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we take the whole search and we kind of turn it on its head where we, we figure out first what's the ideal fit for you. And then we kind of narrow it down to the top three where you can actually dig deep as opposed to looking at this whole universe of all these different brands in 75 industries and randomly kind of like throwing a dart and, and uh, taking maybe three or five or even 10 or 20 and kind of digging deep and then kind of being frustrated because you probably shouldn't have, this probably shouldn't have even made your shortlist to begin with. Right. And then when, when you do that exercise are, are sometimes are people kind of surprised that the, that the, the ones that end up being the right fit for them all the time. Right. So I've had this role. I've been in the franchising world now for 14 years. I've had this for seven years. In seven years of doing this, I've made um, about 140 placements for 280 territories, right? And I'm exhibit A because I never thought that I'd be cleaning toilets for a living. But when I saw the three uh, businesses, this one's just the one that really matched me the best and really resonated. And I was really in a situation where I really uh, had a great vibe with the head of the franchise brand. We both went to the same university and just felt like I fit into the culture and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously that would, <laughs> that was just a, a surprise, a surprising one. Uh, and then um, for people who have existing franchises, uh, you know, when, when you start to look at maybe expanding or building, how do you, how do you, uh, do you work with people at, at different phases or is it just at the choosing phase? John, this is such a great question. So what I would say is, is that I work with people that have an existing franchise brand that mm -hmm. are looking to potentially add to their portfolio. One of my candidates bought a daycare and now he's looking to buy a swim school. I thought it'd be a great add on business. What I also provide for my candidates is that I'm here, I actually host free of charge, a round table for placements. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to give back. And I think there's a value in having people that are not necessarily in your system to kind of talk to other systems and kind of uh, have a support group to see what's going on in their world. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that would be something great for, for people to look out for. Um, and then just finally, what do you see? Do you, um, I mean, franchising has been around for a while. What do you see the future of franchising? I think the future is bright. I mean, look, for me, again, I, as I mentioned, I think that people had this taste during COVID of a flexible work schedule. And I think right now we're seeing lots of layoffs in the tech sector. In fact, my understanding is that there were more layoffs in the tech sector than ever, even during the pandemic a couple months ago, yeah. uh, related to AI or whatever the reason was. So I just think that this future of having, uh, being an entrepreneur and having trading wheels, right? Being alone, but not really being alone. I think it's not going anywhere, if anything, getting bigger and going into new industries. Uh, I'm just very, very excited and bullish about the business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Adam, thank you so much for today. All of Adam's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the business. So if you're interested in just kind of a quick free chat, just to kind of see if you're a fit or not uh, for my free process, um, just go ahead and, and reach out to me. You can reach out on the website, franchisecoach.net, or to get directly to my 15-minute calendar, it's franchiseadam.com. And I look forward to talking with you and getting to know you better. Absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, Adam. And thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. You're welcome.